Do you know that the wise men found Jesus in a house? Not the stable. Who did not know that? Or who does not know that? You all know that. You are such a clever bunch. Now I can go sit down and... <laughs> there was a time when I did not know that. It was back in 1960. In 1960, I just started studying the Bible, so I decided I was going to read through the Bible. So I started in Genesis 1, verse 1. I read about creation, and the time I got to chapter 6 and 7, I read about Noah and the ark. And then I got to chapter 10, and I read that so-and-so beget, so-and-so beget, so-and-so beget somebody else. And I thought, this is a ridiculous book. How can one read it? So I thought, no, let me go to the New Testament. People had always told me New Testament is easy. So I went to the New Testament, Matthew 1, verse 1, and it says, Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham... Son of David, Jesus Christ, the son of David, son of Abraham. And then I read, so-and-so begot so-and-so, begot so-and-so, and they begot somebody else. And I thought, this is a ridiculous book. I heard my little granddaughter say exactly the same thing. Because their mother bought her a Bible. She said, I tried to read it, and then I got to all these begots. Anyway, so I skipped Matthew 1, the first part, and I got to Joseph, who was the spouse to Mary. And in a dream, angel told him, don't put her away. Marry her. Then I got to Matthew 2. So this was my first day of trying to read the Bible. It was a Sunday. And I read Matthew 2 about the wise men who came looking for Jesus. In verse 10 I read, When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and fell down and worshipped him. And I thought, that's not possible. The wise men saw Jesus in the house. So I did the obvious thing. I thought, well, it must be different in the other Gospels. So I turned to Mark, and I found out that Mark doesn't say anything about the birth of Jesus. So I went to Luke, and I found in Luke it doesn't say anything about the wise men. It only mentions the shepherds. Then I went to John, and John doesn't say anything about the birth of Jesus. So I went back to Matthew, I read it again, and I thought, oh, I must go talk to my friend who lived down the corridor. He was a Sunday school teacher. I thought he would be happy to hear what I had just found in the Bible. So I walked into his room, and I said, I've just been reading the Bible. He said, oh, good. You know, I was one of those people who... Just by looking at them, you knew that they needed a little spiritual help. He said, good. I said, yes, I read that the wise men found Jesus in the house, not a stable. He said, no, that's not true. I said, yes, I have just read it in Matthew 2, verse 11. I'll never forget this. He was still dressed in his Sunday best. He'd just come back from Sunday, teaching Sunday school at the Dutch Reformed Church and. Uh, so his Bible was right there on his desk, and he picked it up, and I said, Matthew 2, verse 11. So he turned to Matthew 2, verse 11, and he read it quietly, and then he read the whole chapter while I stood there, all the way down to verse 11. And then he said, which is what I said, 
must be different than the other Gospels. So off he went to Mark. And I said to him, it's not in Mark. Uh, he went to Mark. Then he went to Luke. I said, it's not in Luke either. Luke only talks about the shepherds. Uh, then he went to John. I said to him, it's not in John. I was trying to help him. Uh, it was irritating him. Then he went back to Matthew. He went back to Matthew and he read it again. And when he got to verse 11, he read it out loud. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And he did an amazing thing. He had his Bible. He shut it. He banged it down. He said, I'm not going to read it again. And I was horrified because I thought I had just put this poor man right off reading the Bible. I was glad later on that afternoon where my room was, I could look down the pathway that went down to the train station to see him about five o'clock heading down that pathway off to the evening church. He had to catch a train to town to the church. And I saw he still had his Bible in his hand, and I rejoiced, and I thought, well, at least he's still going to read the Bible. Now, for you old-time Bible readers, you knew that the wise men found Jesus in the house. Some people don't know this, and maybe some people listening to us are wondering where I got it from. So I'd like to just go through the story of the wise men. I did go through the story of the shepherds during the Feast of Tabernacles, those of you who were here in Big Sandy and heard that good sermon. I have to say it was a good sermon because nobody else told me it was a good sermon. Um, It was the best sermon ever. <laughs> I'm joking, but it was interesting. Let's look at this and learn a very important lesson. Matthew 2, verse 1. Now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east. It does not say three wise men. It just says wise men from the east. Why do people think there were three wise men? Because they brought three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold, that's a gift for a king. If they were carting gold, chances are they had a whole entourage to guard. You don't carry gold, you know, just in your back pocket. You... Anybody knew that you were carrying gold, you would have had to protect that frankincense. That's an expensive kind of a thing that was used for incense and for fragrance. Myrrh. What's that? Many of these words we have in the Bible. Do you know what myrrh is? Even difficult to spell. When I had uh, prostate cancer, Somebody sent me a book or told me to buy a book. I bought a book about various ointments in the Bible, and one of the ointments it recommended was against cancer was myrrh. Except I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know whether to swallow it or drink it or rub it on. So I tried all of them. Whether it helped or not, I don't know, but I am cancer-free, thank you, God, and, and medical science, and myrrh, in case you didn't know what this thing was all about, myrrh. Anyway, here comes the wise man. I better read faster because my time will run out. Well, you can read the whole chapter, that's good. They came, where did they go looking for the king that was born? They went to the palace. That's obviously the place to go. So they went to the palace and they found a King Herod, who was not a Jew. He was an Idumean from Edom, Esau. 
brother of Jacob, he'd been placed there as king of the Jews by the Romans. Of course, verse 3, when Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled in all Jerusalem with him. Herod would have been troubled. If you go back through the history of the Jews, you'll find before Herod was placed there as a king, they had a Jewish king. The Maccabeans, the Hasmodean family, were ruling before Herod was placed there. So, you know, he would have been worried that, hey, these Jews are going to come take over again. So he had reasons to worry. So anyway, uh, he asked the wise men, where, where will this kid be born? Verse 6, they said, well, you know, the prophet said, uh, in Bethlehem, the land of Judea, because out of you will come a governor that will rule my people Israel. They're quoting from Micah 5 and verse 2. Somebody would have known, oh, that's where it is, and go and get the scroll, unroll the scroll. See, oh, he was born in Bethlehem. Of course, that's interesting that Jesus would be born in Bethlehem. Just for your interest and information. Bethlehem means house of bread. Beth El is house of, house of God. That's a different town. Bethlehem is house of bread. I think that's significant. Why should the bread of life, as Jesus called himself, I am the bread of life, not be born in the house of bread. It's not a fantastic theological thing. It's just interesting. The Bible is interesting. Who didn't know that? That the bread of life was born in the house of bread. Now you know it. So Herod says to the wise men, go find him. And come and tell me. But, verse 7, then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, you see, you got to be careful when you privately call some people into your office. <laughs> it's funny. I mean, this is 2,000 years ago, Herod doing this. The President of the United States did it some time ago. <laughs> You got to read the Bible. Be careful when you call people in privately. Isn't it funny? Anyway, nothing changes. He called them privately and inquired of them diligently When did you see the star? When did you see the star in the east? Because he realized, well, that's when Jesus would have been born. Why would wise men come from the east? You know, it's written as if, well, that, that kind of a thing. That's just what happens. You know, wise men from the east. Well, if you read the Bible, you would know that was lots of wise men from the east. Can you remember some of the wise men from the east in the Old Testament? First one was Job. Wise men from the east. The Wizard of Oz. <laughs> Maybe that's where they got the Wizard of Oz from. The Wizard of Oz. That was Job. Any other wise men? Oh, you got it. It took a while <laughs> for the people in there to suddenly realize. Um, what other wise men do you know in the Old Testament? Daniel, right? And his three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, as you know them, or a prize, $2 for the person that can name me their Hebrew names. Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael, I believe. Nobody gets two dollars. <laughs> uh, 
and he says, to find out where he is and you can come and tell me so I can go and worship him. That's Herod saying that. Tell me where this kid is, I'll go and worship him. Which forever afterwards tells you never believe a politician. I'm not a political animal. Um, verse 9, when they heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star appeared. Now, when we covered the shepherds during the feast, I pointed out the shepherds never saw a star. They were told in Bethlehem, you'll find the child, so they were from Bethlehem. They didn't need a GPS. They just went there. The wise men came from the east. They could have come a long way. They could have come from what is today Iraq. Why would I think they would have come from Iraq? Because that was the east and that's where the tribes of Israel were. Josephus tells us that the tribes of Israel were on the other side of the Euphrates. So they would have journeyed from there. If you look at a map, do not think you can journey straight to Jerusalem because you'd have to cross a desert. So the way you would go is you'd go from wherever the east is, you would go uh, along what was called the Silk Road, so you'd actually travel northwest, and then you'd turn south, and then you'd go through Syria, Lebanon, finally Galilee, Samaria, Judea, and you'd get to Jerusalem. That's how anybody back there would have traveled. So the wise men, they needed a spiritual GPS, so the star was there. So they followed the star. Verse 9, when they heard the king, they departed, and the star which they saw in the east went before them till it came and stood over where the young child was. Okay, so stop right over where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy, and they walked into the house. Why was Jesus in the house? Because he wasn't in the stable anymore. Now, I noticed that it, the English Bible uses young child here, where in Luke with the shepherds it says, babe, you'll find a babe. And I thought maybe these English people just put the word in there, babe for the one and a young child for the other one. So I had to go look at the Greek. Now I know all languages except Greek. Do I know Portuguese? No, that's Greek to me. I do speak a few languages, um, but not Greek, so I have to look it up, and I looked up babe, and I looked up young child, and I find out it's two different words. That's why the English translators, the Greek scholars who gave us this Bible, wrote babe and young child. See, it's all there. It's just that sometimes we look at things, we don't see it. It's there. How many times have you read this and not noticed that it says babe over there and young child over here? Okay, they walked in, fell down, worshipped him, and they laid open their treasures, and they presented them the gift, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then being warned, warned of God in a dream, they said, don't go back to Herod. We know he's waiting for you, but don't go back there. Don't go tell Herod, just go home. And if you look at a map from Bethlehem, you didn't have to go through Jerusalem to go back east. You just could bypass Jerusalem. So they went another way. Verse 13 the angel of God came to Joseph and said, Arise, Herod wants to kill the child. Take him to Egypt. 
So often we get the picture of this poor Joseph and poor Mary and the baby Jesus, and they were poor people, and that's why they had to stay in the stable, not the inn, all that kind of stuff. No, they were just given gold and frankincense and mirror, so they were rich right now, and maybe they were quite wealthy before that because... You find them staying in Bethlehem for a while, and you find them going down to Egypt, and then traveling up to Nazareth. That's more than most of you could afford today. <laughs> so, they went to Egypt. Verse 14, they rose, took the young child and the mother, and went into Egypt, and so it can be fulfilled, that said in the prophet, and the prophet was Hosea, and the verse is Hosea 11, verse 1, which says, out of Egypt have I called my son. Now, anybody else who read Hosea 11, verse 1, and you read, out of Egypt I called my son, you would not come up with the fact that this is talking about Jesus. <laughs> right? Anytime you read in Hosea, out of Egypt I called my son, you would think he's talking about Israel. That's where God called his son from. Right? Israel. But the scripture is dual, so it's applied here. But you'd have to go... Looking for it, you'd have to have a spiritual eye to see something like that. Okay, Herod is upset because the wise men tricked him. So he sends his, sends his soldiers or whoever into Bethlehem and he kills Bethlehem and in all the coasts thereof, so it was Bethlehem and the surrounding area. And he kills every boy from two years old and under. Why two years? Why not just six months? According to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Remember, he'd ask him, when did you see that star? And his conclusion is, we'd better kill everybody two years old and under. Which tells you that the wise men must have arrived there a considerable time later. I would say at least a year. <laughs> Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Now, until you look at a map. You will remember me someday. Now, some of you won't remember me. You might be gone before I'm gone. Doesn't matter. But you will remember me as the man who always said, let's look at a map. Because you see, when you look at a map and you say, okay, do a journey on foot from somewhere on the other side of the Euphrates in the east all the way up the Silk Road into that area which where ISIS has now been partially kicked out of and finally get to Syria and then you head south. It's, it's a long way. So it gives you some idea that there was time factor, the time factor for the babe to become a young child. killed all those babies. I just finished writing a little book on the incredible story of the birth of Jesus. And I put one chapter heading Jesus' birthday. Did Jesus celebrate his birthday? I'm sure his parents would have talked to him a great deal about his birthday, all the things that happened none of which, well, most of which were quite difficult. First of all, you had a nine-month pregnant woman who had to travel all the way down from north in Nazareth all the way down to Bethlehem, almost 100 miles. 
Imagine that. I'm surprised he wasn't born in Samaria or someplace. Halfway down. Obviously, God would have protected them. You imagine Jesus thinking about his birthday and not think about all the children in Bethlehem that died, the blood that flowed in the streets as hundreds, maybe more, Babies were slaughtered, called the slaughter of the innocents. See what I mean? Mary telling Jesus, when you were born, the king of the country wanted to kill you. And Jess, that's not the last time his parents would have told him that. Because it wasn't just a matter of the king of the country wanted to kill you. They would always have known that there were lots of people who always wanted to kill him. Why is it that we don't read about Jesus for 18 years of his life? We read nothing about his life. The answer really is he couldn't just hang around Jerusalem all those times. There were too many people who hated him. And if you go to the book of Revelation, you find there's a big old dragon waiting. When the woman gives birth to this child, this dragon is waiting to devour him. The picture is Mary giving birth to Jesus and Satan the devil wants to devour him. Imagine if you lived like that all your life. Every time you went to church, you think somebody's going to wait there. To, as you walk in church, into the temple, there's some people in the temple, in some corner, kind of whispering, hey, will we get him this time or shall we wait till the next feast? That was Jesus' life. Anyway, you can read the rest here, verse 19. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph and said, okay, you can go back. But then he found out that Herod's son had taken over, so he, they went back to Nazareth. As it says in verse 23, came and dwelt in a city called Nazareth, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. He shall be called a Nazarene. Where in the Old Testament does it say he will be called a Nazarene? Anybody know? Nobody knows. The reason is because it's not stated in the Old Testament. <laughs> That's right. You won't find it. I went looking for it. I thought, where is this? Because you just have to read the scripture, you see. That it might be fulfilled, which was not written by the prophets, spoken by the prophets. It was part of the oral tradition. It's not in the Old Testament. You can have fun going looking for it, but I saved you the trouble. What's the big lesson here? I'll tell you what the big lesson is for me. First time I read this was 1960. I read something in the Bible and I saw something I had never seen before. And between me and my friend who was a Sunday school teacher, I accepted it. He refused to accept it. 1960 is a long time ago. Can't even figure out how many years that is. My mathematics is not too good. 40, 50, 57 years ago. You see, that's always the test. What do you do when you see something that you didn't know before? 
Now, when I was preparing the sermon about the birth of Jesus and the shepherds and what I did in that sermon is I just went through Luke, the first chapter, and then the second chapter. And I just read the story of Jesus' birth and all that, Mary and John the Baptist and all that. And let me just refresh your mind about what happened when Jesus was born. He was born in Bethlehem. The shepherds came, saw him there, right? You know that. And they rejoiced and they told everybody, so here Mary is in Bethlehem. What happened when Jesus was eight days old? He was circumcised. Where was he circumcised? My friend Gary Petty of United Church wrote in the Beyond Today magazine that Jesus was circumcised in Jerusalem. So I wrote him and I said, uh, how did you come up with that? And he wrote back and he said, oh, no, I was wrong about that. You see, he's a good man. So always a good man who can say, hey, no, I was wrong. You see, Bethlehem is five miles from Jerusalem. Would you take the mother who had just given birth to the baby eight days before and walk her all the way to Jerusalem? <laughs> no, it doesn't say just says he was circumcised. How would it have happened? Well, the local rabbi would have done that. Any Jew reading that would just see it. That's what happens. You call the local rabbi, he comes to the house, and he performs the Brit, it's called. The covenant. The Brit. Did you know that word? Remember Brit-ish, covenant people? A Brit is that little service, which I attended one time with my second son, who was circumcised by a rabbi who also was considered a scribe, and I had to sit there and hold the baby, and mom was there, and the rabbi circumcised the baby, and I fainted. No, I didn't. So Jesus was circumcised the eighth day. Then when the time of her purification was finished, they went to Jerusalem. Remember? And they went to the temple. When was the time when her purification was finished? Well, I'm a wise man, I'll tell you. Forty-one days after he was born. How do I know that? Because the Old Testament says for a baby boy, it was 33 days after his circumcision. Why it's different for, was different for a boy and a girl, I have no idea. The girl was much longer. So, 41 days after Jesus was born, his parents took him to the temple and they offered a turtle dove couple of turtle doves. You know the story. And a man called Simeon came there, took the child up in his arms and pronounced a blessing over him. And then Anna the prophetess came there and she waxed eloquent. And then the amazing thing, I thought about this year, so it took me 57 years to learn it, some of us are slow. I realized, how could Mary and Joseph have taken Jesus to the temple 41 days later, presented him there? If Herod had known about this since Jesus' birth, because for sure, you can imagine, Joseph and Mary, and Mary has got the Jesus in her arms, and they get to the temple steps, and guess who would have been waiting there for them? 
the army and they would have killed them. They certainly would have killed that baby. Isn't that amazing? We, if we just read the story. So instead of walking out of here over the next few days and weeks and telling people that Christmas is pagan, that nobody's going to listen to you anyway, some of them will even say, oh, we know that, but we do it for the kids. Tell them the interesting details, like, did you know that the wise men found Jesus in the house? Did you know there could have been more than three wise men? Some traditions say 12. Why? Because of the 12 tribes of Israel. To tell people Christmas is pagan doesn't, a lot of them know it, doesn't stop them. But let's talk about some of these exciting things. Did you know that Jesus actually went up to Jerusalem 41 days after his birth and they didn't kill him? Not even some of you knew that. <laughs> Let's think of the interesting things. I know for the next few weeks all you'll hear is jingle bells, jingle bells, and let's go for a sleigh ride, and, and nobody has turned this silly festival into more commercialism than the Americans. We're crazy. Over in China, some little peasant village is a Chinese woman, and she's making little baby Jesuses and little Christmas trees and all this kind of thing. And somebody says to her, what are you doing? I don't know. I'm just making this stuff. It all goes to America. They have no idea that they're doing it for us. Let's forget about all that. But look at the interesting story. The incredible story of the birth of Jesus. Let's close. Father in heaven, almighty God, we thank you for your word preserved for us so we can get excited about it, be thrilled, and be inspired. We appreciate it, and we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen.